He said implementing universal suffrage in the 2017 chief executive election is one of the key tasks of his administration. He called on the people to put aside their differences and work together to reach a consensus. Saying housing remains the main issue of public concern, the CE pledged to increase land supply. He also promised to work towards improvements regarding some long-standing livelihood issues, such as an ageing society, poverty and the environment. There were also a number of events to celebrate the handover anniversary, but some were cut short because of the rainy weather. Rachel Lung has that story. Chief Executive Lun Chenying kicked off official celebrations at Tamar this afternoon, along with the director of the central government's liaison office, Jiang Xiaoming. Apart from the songs and dance, spectators, many of them elderly or were from the mainland, were given free hats and t-shirts. This mainlander said he's here to celebrate Hong Kong's anniversary. The Hong Kong Celebrations Association, which staged the event, estimated that 225,000 people attended handover festivities around town. The head of the association, Zheng Yu Tong, said they were offering an alternative way to spend the day other than joining the anti-government rally. A concert at the Okai Tech Airport runway went ahead despite the storm. But then it was a bit of a washout. It was the same story over at the Cultural Center in Chimsha Choi, where the pro-government group Voice of Loving Hong Kong held a carnival. Voice of Loving Hong Kong originally planned for the participants to sit on the steps while they enjoyed the show, but instead they're all hiding under the canopy because of the rain. The group also plans to launch a campaign which they say will counter the Occupy Central movement next year. Rachel Lung, TVB News. To other news now, the strong wind signal number three is in effect. The observatory expects severe tropical storm Rumbia to be closest to Hong Kong in the next few hours, passing at about 400 kilometers to our southwest. At 11 p.m., Rumbia was about 380 kilometers southwest of us. It's forecast to move northwest at 22 kilometers per hour towards western Guangdong and Hainan Island. The observatory says Rumbia has been moving northwest steadily in the past few hours. It also says the strong wind signal number three will remain in force for some time overnight. Overseas now, a published report that the U.S. bugged and hacked its allies, the European Union, is the latest leak by intelligence whistleblower Edward Snowden. Not only did the European Union express outrage, many in its 28 member states are demanding answers. Here's Sonia Artero. German magazine Der Spiegel reported that the NSA bugged EU offices and gained access to EU internal computer networks. It also disclosed that each month, U.S. Secret Service taps half a billion phone calls, emails and text messages in Germany, similar to the data it taps in China or Iraq. The irony is, negotiations of a free trade agreement between the European Union and the United States is about to begin. This is no way to treat a trusted ally, says the EU Parliament President. Yeah, I'm shocked in case uh, that it is true. Uh, I feel treated as a European and representative of a European institution, like the representative of an enemy. Uh, is this the basis for a constructive uh, relationship on the basis of mutual trust? I think no. Equally shocked was Japan, who reacted to a similar report in the Guardian newspaper. Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Yoshihide Suga, says Japan will call the U.S. for an immediate explanation. This latest Snowden bomb triggered only a short response from the U.S. government that it collects intelligence just like every other nation. As Snowden begins his second week of hiding in Moscow with a canceled U.S. passport, his plan for seeking asylum in Ecuador is going nowhere fast. 
Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa maintains Snowden's fate lies in the hands of Russian authorities.